folks hope you are doing great welcome to this video where i'll be answering all your queries related to our biking expedition in this beautiful trans himalayas in this video we'll cover all the basic questions related to biking especially in places like ladakh and spiti so without wasting any time let's begin on my biking expedition with wander on which bike can i choose from this is our most commonly asked question and for all the right reasons when you're traveling with wander on we provide you a variety of choices for you to choose from For example, in places like Ladakh, we give you the 500 cc and the Himalayan. While some people prefer more torque and more power, they opt for 500 cc. While others like the balance of the Himalayan. In places like Spiti, we also give you the option of 350 cc. Because in Spiti, we hardly cross any high passes, so the 350 cc engine works just fine. Moving on to our next question, which is also related to Royal Enfield. Why does Wanderon only provide Royal Enfield? So let me put it this way: bikes like KTM and other racing bike work just fine. But the only issue is that there are hardly any mechanics who can work on that. When it comes to Royal Enfield, the mechanics are more comfortable and also the spare parts are very easy to find. But for the racing bike, neither will find the mechanic nor the spare part. So if your bike develops a snag, it has to be towed away directly to Manali, Chandigarh, or Delhi. Even for our solo riders or those who are traveling without any company, we suggest you to bring Royal Enfield for your trip. On to the next question: Can I bring my own bike to the expedition? Yes, of course you can. You can bring your own bike and gear. However, just keep in mind the CC requirement as told in the previous question. Also, if you are not bringing Royal Enfield, do carry some spare part just in case of emergency. The next question we receive a lot, especially from our female client. Is there any height criteria for riding bike? Honestly, this is a very gender neutral question. It is a personal decision depending on what you are looking for in the bike. For instance, If you are below 5.6 feet, we suggest you to go for 500 cc, and people beyond that can opt for Himalayan. But if you are comfortable enough to handle the bike, then choose any. Okay, moving on to the gears and essentials. What gear should I carry? In our expedition, you will be provided with a helmet, your elbow guard, your knee guard, and your gloves to protect your knuckles and also save you from the extreme weather. If you want to bring your personal helmet that you are better comfortable with please go ahead next up if you want to bring your riding jackets go ahead because the shoulder pads do provide the extra security factor and lastly your riding boots if you are not a full time rider i suggest you to not go buying expensive riding boots instead trekking shoes from stores like decathlon work just fine however just keep in mind they are waterproof so that it will help you from cold and also keep your feet dry when water crossings question number 6 Do we get a mechanical backup in our expedition or should we carry our own toolkit? If you're traveling with Wonder Room, there is always a mechanic traveling with you. So in case of any issue that can be fixed on spot, the mechanic will do the job. Also, there is always a backup vehicle traveling behind the convoy. So in case of any issue, the mechanic support reaches you in no time. Moving on to the next question. Okay. So we all know that carrying minimum weight will help you reduce exhaustion. of course because when you are traveling hundreds of kilometer every day you are bound to get tired so our aim is to also reduce this by just carrying the essential in our day pack to answer your question do i have to carry a day pack and what all should i keep yes you have to carry your day pack because it's your first responder always carry number 1 your rain cover number 2 your hydration pack number 3 extra socks number 4 your power bag number 5 full and or jacket and number 6 first aid kit This list will help you in snowfall, rainfall, extreme heat, and water crossing. Also, we recommend you to carry a good sunscreen to prevent your skin from damage, as sun rays are pretty strong at high altitudes. So, moving on to the next question. What about the fuel bag? how will we manage that on a trip when we start our expedition your bike tank would be loaded to full also the backup vehicle carry sufficient amount of refill to last your journey so in case you are running low just give heads up to the team captain and you're good to go moving on to the next question which is something you must always keep in mind what is gear pick and why should we prefer gear pick within next 30 second i'm going to explain the basic mechanism to you so bikes have disc brakes right so whenever we are constantly braking it heat up the disc brake and affect the ability of the bike to brake so in order to avoid this while going down the slope instead of using brakes a lot we recommend gear braking 
slowly reduce the gear and this will automatically affect the speed of your bike and will also not affect your disc brake. So whenever you're traveling in the mountain, just make full use of your bike. Next question. I have never taken a bike ride in the mountains. Would that be a problem? No, of course not. Like everything else in life, this is also a must experience. The key is to simply follow the rules. Your convoy rules are the most important one. Always listen to your team captain and follow the instruction given by them. You should have some prior experience in biking. So practice around your local area. Just keep the biking signals in mind and you will be good to go. Let us discuss another significant topic AMS. Acute mountain sickness. I am sure you have all heard stories of people getting headaches, people randomly vomiting or other issues related to AMS. So before I tell you how to avoid it, let me first explain what exactly is AMS. See, when you are travelling to places like Ladakh and you are daily exerting yourself, you are inhaling less oxygen. In order to cope up with the lack of oxygen, your body reacts negatively in the form of symptoms. Though AMS is not fatal, but it is highly irritating. Also, if left untreated for a longer duration of time, it can cause other problems too. So the question is, how can I avoid AMS while riding? See, hydrate yourself from time to time. That's why we recommend you to carry your hydration pack. Second, avoid having cigarettes and alcohol in high altitude places, especially if you're going there for the first time. Practice a few breathing exercises on a daily basis. This will also help you to increase your stamina to ride throughout the day. And lastly, get a good night's sleep and wake up fresh. As a company, our team captains are trained in medic. So rest assured, in case of emergency, you will have a first responder leading at you. Oh, there you are. Moving on. Would there be a lot of water crossings and how does one navigate through it? Yes. In places like Ladakh, you are bound to come across water crossing all along the highway. However, there is nothing to worry about. You can easily cross them with few tips and tricks in mind. And also, there will always be the team captain to guide you. First, make sure you ride always on the mountain side and never on the cliff side. Second, make sure you half clutch and slowly navigate through rocks. And the most important thing, never let the water get in your silencer or else the bike will switch off. And no matter what, just remain calm. And the last question of today's video and indeed an important one. Which bike should I take if there is a peel-in rider with me? And what are the things that peel-in riders should always keep in mind? Biking trips in these beautiful mountains are always exciting. Not only for the rider but also for the peel-in. So if you are someone who would be accompanied by a peel-in, I prefer you to take Royal Enfield Himalaya. Because the suspension of this bike is better. And now the peel-in has some serious duties to do. Firstly, always keep your body weight in the center and always inform your rider before taking any movement so he or she can slow down. Secondly, avoid unnecessary talk because it causes distraction. And thirdly, always pass biking signal to the convoy behind you and you are good to go. Well guys, I think I have answered at least some of your queries. The summer is here and we are excited for our biking trip just as you are. But always remember, safety comes first. Let us know if you have any more questions and we will for sure answer them. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. And I'll see you guys on one of those trips.